During the Horus Heresy, clash of the Primarchs was inevitable, one of which is the Warhawk Jagatai Khan and the Death Lord Mortarian. Let's see what happened. For much of the Great Crusade, the errant White Scars Legion under the command of the Primarch Jagatai Khan had remained absent from the current chain of events that were only now beginning to trickle in to their fleet's astropathic choirs. As they interpreted the astropathic messages they received in a contradictory manner, they began to suspect that things were not right. It had begun in the conduct system, right towards the end of the campaign against the Greenskins, the first inkling that all was not well. There had been no detail then, no authentication, just stray astropathic messages of dubious provenance. It should have been easy to dismiss, to put down to the warping power of the Emperor, but it had worn on the Khan, unraveling his sleep. Jagatai was next contacted by the Space Wolves Lehman Russ, who had just returned from the Battle of Prospero and the assault against the Space Wolves' old rivals, the Thousand Suns Legion. The Sixth Legion's fleet had mustered at the Alexis Nebula to lick its wounds after the recent campaign, when it was beset by the forces of the Alpha Legion. Although the Khan sympathized with the Space Wolves' predicament, he refused to get involved until he was able to sort out the conflicting and often contradictory astropathic messages he had received, until he knew beyond a shadow of doubt who was ally and who was enemy. He refused to choose sides, wishing his brother the best of luck. Jagatai wished to seek his answers elsewhere. The White Scars fleet made all haste towards Prospero, the recently ravaged homeworld of the Thousand Suns Legion. The Kagan ordered his legion to head for the source of the trouble, to find the architect of the chaos engulfing the Imperium, yet only one soul could see the warp as it truly was, and that was Magnus the Red, the only one of his brothers that Jagatai had ever truly trusted. If Magnus yet lived, then everything could be salvaged, if he was dead, then the Imperium was finished. Eventually the Khan found the answers he sought in the crystal caves deep underground beneath the destroyed Prosperon capital city of Tizka. When he made his way back to the surface of the planet, he next encountered an unexpected visitor. As the clouds above them began to glow, a vibrant shard of light speared down from the smog, crackling as it hit the stone below. The Terminators turned to face it, powering up their weapons. Jagatai told his bodyguard he had felt this new arrival's presence following them for a long time. He had been on the Khan's heels since Ulanur. At long last, he had finally caught up. The Khan ordered his warriors to stand down, for the stranger was beyond all of them. How could he not be? For his brother Mortarion, the Death Lord, Primarch of the Death God Legion had found them. Watching the ash settle and the residual snags of ether burn rebel into nothing, seven figures within the male storm emerged. Six of them were legionnaires. They were clad in thick slab terminator armor and carried huge power scythes known as man reapers. Their baldrons were olive green and the links between the plates were cold iron. They were massive, heavier set than the Khan's retinue, hunched at the shoulder and leaking pale green vapor from the last of the teleportation beams. These were members of Mortarion's elite bodyguard, the Death Shroud. Mortarion proceeded to explain the reason for his recent arrival. He told Jagatai that he had sought him out, for things had changed. Jagatai realized that his brother had come to persuade him to join the traitor's cause. The Khan observed him guardedly, for Mortarion had always been hard to read. He left his blade unsheathed holding it loosely at his side. Observing the physical changes in his brother, he noticed that Bontarian's power seemed to have grown. Something burned in him, dark like old embers. His flesh was somehow bleaker, his stance a little more crapped, and yet the aura of intimidation around him had been augmented. Back on Ulanor, even at the height of their triumph, he had not possessed quite the same heft. Jagatai commanded his brother to say what he had come to the ruins of Prospero to say. The Khan correctly surmised that Horus had not sent Mortarion. He had come of his own accord, with his own agenda. Mortarion brushed off the Khan's reasoning, but Jagatai pressed him. The Death Guard Primarch attempted to sway the Khan to Horus' cause, as Jagatai had surmised, to imagine a galaxy of warriors, of hunters, where the strong were given their freedom to act as they would, unbound by the Emperor's demands. The Khan was no fool. Of course, this new galaxy would all be led by Horus. Mortarion merely shrugged. Horus would be the start of the new order. He was the champion, the sacrificial king. He might burn himself out to get to Terra. He might not. 
Either way, there would be room for others to rise to power over the galaxy to come. Mortarion told his brother that he should not have thrown in his lot with Sanguinius, let alone Magnus. He hated to see the three of them getting dragged in deeper by the Emperor's hypocrisy. Their father had tried to pretend that it was not there, the warp, as if he were not already up to his elbows in its soul-sucking filth. In Mortarion's opinion, it should have been cordoned off, put away, forgotten about forever by mankind. But the Khan was not fooled by his brother's sincerity. He had seen what had happened. The Death Lord had never hidden what he wanted. Jagatai could see how his brother thought it would all play out. First, hope of the sorcerers, silence the witches, drive them out, and rule with bars to the uncorrupted, the healthy, those untouched by the warp. This was Mortarion's great project. He had even told the Khan all of this on Ulanor after the triumph. The Khan had thought back then that they were empty threats, but he should have known better. Mortarion did not make empty threats. But it had all gone wrong. Though Mortarion had completed his great mission and the Emperor had handed down the edicts of Nikea forbidding the use of sorcery and the disbandment of the Legion's librarious divisions, there were now more sorcerers than ever amongst the ranks of the traitors. Horus had sponsored them. Loga had shown them new tricks. If Magnus had not already made up his mind on which side of the conflict he would be on, then he would soon would and then Mortarion would be surrounded. He had destroyed the librarians of the legions only to find the witches were now untrammeled amongst the traitors. The Khan had seen the overall picture perfectly. Magnus's shade had showed him. Jagatai proceeded to warn his brother that though his legion might be free of the warp's corruption for now, the change would come, for Mortarion had made his pacts with the masters of the Emperor, and now they would come to collect their due. But this was exactly why Mortarion had come to find Jagatai. The Death Lord had run out of friends amongst the traitor Primarchs, who would stand with him against the Psychos now among the traitors, most assuredly not the brother Angron, nor the half-mad Conrad Kurz. The Khan gazed at Mortarion disdainfully. His brother had tasted the fruits of treachery and found them better. The Khan did not wish to be dragged into his brother's room. Mortarion was on his own. Struggling to contain his anger at the Khan's refusal of his pleas for alliance, the Death Lord warned Jagatai that he had come to give his brother a choice. Half of the White Scar's legion had already declared for Horus, and the others would follow wherever the Kagan ordered them. Their father's time was over. The Khan could either be a part of the new order that replaced him or be swept aside in its wake. The Khan merely smiled, a cold smile, imperious in its contempt. He would not countenance a new emperor, neither himself nor Mortarion. Jagatai explained that the reason neither one of them would ever rule the galaxy is that both of them were never the empire builders, they were the outriders. Mortarion had chafed at this role, while the Khan had embraced it. Enraged, Mortarion backed away, and his scythe, silence, cracked into life sparkling with green-tinged energy. The Death Shroud Terminators lowered their scythe in a combat posture. Behind the Khan, the Kishig readied their blades. The Khan prepared to settle their argument once and for all. The two Pramarchs circled one another, prepared to finally engage in a deadly duel that would decide their fates. As the two demigods battled, their respective retinues also fell onto one another in deadly close combat. The silent Death Shroud were just as implacable as the their master as they fought the White Scar's Kishig amidst the wreckage of a lost world. Warriors of both sides soon fell, their bodies caked in the thickness of blood and dust, but the dispute raged on. Bitter and unyielding, the two Primarchs traded deadly blows, tearing into one another, each strike powered by raw defiance. As they hacked and countered, neither giving up a single measure of ground, their blood mingled upon the blade's edges, as rich and dark as wine. Summoning up one last burst of energy, the Khan held position, banting hard as he dragged out the remnants of his power for the final clash. In response, Mortarion only stood rigid, as though suddenly listening for something. His scythe fell into the guard position and a thin coffin broke from his mask, which the Khan realized was an exhausted kind of chortle. So the choice has been made. 
The Death Lord informed Jagatai that the respective fleets in orbit of Prospero were now at war. This was not what they had been promised by the White Scar's treacherous warrior lodge brothers, but the Death Lord refused to lose a fleet for the sake of this fight. Feeling the dust stir around his feet, coils of marsh green teleportation energy rebelled downward. Mortarians saluted the Khan mockingly, and spears of hard-edged light lanced down from above. Bursting through the cloud cover and crashing through the heart of the ruined Tesca pyramid they had been fighting within. The Khan sprang forward, seeing too late what was happening. In an instant, the Death Lord and his retinue were snatched away, sucked into the vortex of the warp. The devastated world's wind howled in the empty wake. Staring the ashes of ruined Tesca, Jagatai, carried by the momentum of his final thrust, staggered through the empty space where his brother, now his enemy, had been. The second battle of Prospero was over. Alright guys, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay tuned for more.